An ounce of image is worth a pound of performance. Spotting kit to me is an essential because it says that the professional has arrived. And some of you know this story where we were called by a, cus by a consumer who had a Dalmatian dog that had some urine sta spots and stains. They called a company who, and they looked in the yellow pages, this company's logo was a Dalmatian dog. So they, and it guaranteed, that's always a mistake. That word, <laughs> that word's a mistake. So they came out, they didn't get all the spots out. They called them and they refused to come back. They'd already cashed a check. So they called the TV station. You know, troubleshooter. So they contacted the cleaner. No, I'm not going to come out. How would you like to be on television, you know, refusing to take it? That's what happened. So the, uh, the fellow with the television station was a friend of Mr. Bain's. Mr. Bain has a lot of friends. And we went out there with one of our cleaning vans. I went with Mr. Bain. And what was interesting about the whole thing was I walked in. Here's the cameraman as well as the, you know, the guy doing the talking and everything. I walk in with my spotting kit. He zoomed in on the spotting kit because what did the spotting kit say? The professional, the expert, has arrived to take care of the problem. And what's really interesting, knowing that I was on stage, I'm expecting, I'm talking about it and everything, and then out of my spotting kit, I whip out this. I hardly ever use this thing. So I whip this out, and I get out my duckbill shears, and I sniff an affected tuft, and I'm looking at it under the microscope, and oh, he's a your cameraman zooming in on that, and oh boy, this is really great. Only problem was it was broken the day before, and I wasn't seeing anything. But it, <laughs> it did not matter. It does not matter. Because you're on stage, it's irrelevant. He can't tell that I can't see anything. But, you know, you're, you, what you don't realize sometimes is you're on stage, you're an actor. You're putting on an act. You, and you're conveying, a, you know, a professional image. Urine stains, urine stain remover. We'll talk about that very briefly. I'm watching my time. But the biggest thing to take care of urine stains is this stuff. How many here has ever used OSR? Does that work? It works super. Here's mixing up some OSR in hot water. Stir it up. He's dropping a piece of carpet that's saturated with urine. It chemically destroys it. That's why you see all the bubbling going on. That's what it does. It chemically destroys urine and blood and other interesting things that you might find here and this happens to be in the home of the owner of CTI so he does a bunch of things that you don't do normally he's got some cat urine along the wall so he, he pulls back the carpet anything wrong with this picture where's the shoe booties how do you like the uniform how do you like touching a cat urine contaminated carpet with your bare hands? You know it's going to be sticky by now. Oh, here's the next thing he does that's interesting. Would you place, he's going to cut, he's putting his new pad down, he's going to cut through both so that the new pad that he's going to replace exactly matches the old, but what's wrong with the picture? He's contaminated the new pad. You put some plastic in between, pulls that out, gets rid of the old, old pad, cleans up the mess in there, gets his odor barrier, soaks down the area, lays down two mil sheet plastic, he tapes it around the edge and to the back of the carpet. Here's where, here's what he's doing. He's going to cl 
create a bathtub, drops it back in, it's all sunk down because there's no pad in there, whips up his OSR, don't mix it in home like he's doing, very hot water, hotter the barrier, about a gallon per four to five square feet. Dump it. Move it around with your floor tool. You notice the foam that's going on. It's working on it. He's not, he's not extracting. He's just using his floor tool to move it around. Give it about half an hour. Suck it out with no water. You're not rinsing it. Do it a second time if need be. It's going to feel stiff for a while. Pull it back. Don't remove the plastic sheeting. Put in the new pad. Trim it off. Tape it. Put it back in. Kick it in. carefully, trim off the plastic, leave it, it's done. Nothing like OSR. Don't do this on wool. It dissolves wool. It's good stuff. <laughs> it's good stuff. Does a great job. We can do the same thing in the center room like we just did here with OSR. <coughs> same deal. Mix up your OSR, pour it on there, which may damage the wood underneath, of course. Suck it out with our water cloth. The disadvantage of doing that is I may damage the wood underneath. If possible, pull the carpet. And uh, the other thing is, what was the part that I left out by doing it this way? No water barrier. How about rugs? 70% of the rugs we can get in here are brought in white. Because they're dirty? No. 70% of them because they're soaked with urine. I can't understand why somebody would take a thousand dollar rug and turn it into a cat's bathroom or a dog's bathroom. Makes no sense to me. They do it all the time. You can build this. Just take some PVC pipe. Don't glue it together because you want to be able to take it apart. Ours is back in the back, standing upright, out of the way, except for when we need it. You take some six mil plastic sheeting, lay it over that, overlap, drop your rug in, that in there an hour or two. That will totally dissolve the urine. You drain that out or suck it all out of there, then proceed to clean your rug.